During the formation of Runeterra, sapient beings began to come into existence. Primitive humans, Yordles, and Vestaya Shire were beginning to develop, and along with this development came the capacity for emotion. One of the first emotions to be expressed by these ancient beings was fear, and with the first screams of terror, the primordial demons of Runeterra would come into existence, fueled by these negative emotions and constantly seeking new sources of anguish to satisfy their appetites. The oldest of these demons, known as Fiddlesticks, is one of the most ancient entities in all of Runeterra. Legends say that although he has existed in one form or another all throughout time, once long ago, a sorcerer was practicing magic, far beyond his comprehension. Foolishly, the young mage had accidentally summoned forth an ancient darkness, too powerful for the mage to control. Instantly, the mage, the demon, and the tower where the mage was conducting his magic were extinguished from existence in the blink of an eye. Tales of this mysterious entity have made their way all throughout Runeterra, from the Freljord, where children spread rumors of a creature who rises from the ice, its body a mix of wood, fur, and armor, to a story told by Noxian soldiers of an irresponsible farmhand who was eaten alive by crows as punishment for his bad harvest. In every kingdom of Runeterra, there exists some form of this boogeyman myth, of something that looks human and wanders areas that are shrouded in fear. Throughout time, these stories have been cast aside as myth, until recently. Since magic use has begun to rise in Namasia once again, fears of these magic users have spread far and wide, from the outer farmlands, to the roadside taverns, to the outskirts of the kingdom walls. Villagers are reporting sightings of a hunched over man in the form of a scarecrow, speaking in a raspy, familiar voice. Whether this entity has been summoned by another rogue mage, or is simply reappearing to feast on the fears of the citizens, it is not clear. But what is known is that the primordial demon, Fiddlesticks, now roams the Demacian hinterlands, waiting to feed on his next fearful victims. In the Damasian farm village of Goldwield, something strange has occurred. It began when one of the villagers, thought to be drunk after a hard day's labor, locked himself in a shack and started muttering to himself about spiders, heights, and being eaten alive by birds. As the other villagers assumed this behavior was being caused by a combination of the alcohol and perhaps PTSD from his past battles, they left him alone in the shack to sober up, assuming that he would be back to normal the next morning. However, as the night grew darker, screams began to emanate from around the shack. The first scream was clearly that of the villager, but the second, while similar, was much higher pitched than the man's normal voice. Help me! As the villagers listened to these screams, one of them shouted that it must be mages, and at this news, the entire village began arming themselves. Everyone began running towards the town hall, boarding up the windows and stirring an infectious panic. As the townsfolk congregated, they began to organize a militia, planning to take out these supposed mages. The plan was for everyone to wait until morning, and then go out in pairs, to see if they could hunt down the rogue mages. But as the sun rose, an entire family had gone missing, their farmhouse destroyed, and their livestock mutilated. The first pair of militia members went into the fields, searching for the mages, but they never returned. When one of the townsfolk called out to them, the same voice that was heard screaming the night before called back. Several other townsfolk began rushing into the fields, desperate to find their neighbors. But as they went in, one by one, they were never seen again. The remaining townsfolk began sprinting towards their homes, taking the day to board up their houses and take account of their loved ones. And as the sun set again, paranoia and delusion began to set in for many of the villagers, and they began muttering to themselves, manically describing their biggest fears. And as the lights slowly went out in these houses, the mutterings stopped, one by one. The village of Goldwield is now a ghost town, and all that remains are the crows and the voice which they follow. Just a scarecrow. <laughs> Another primordial demon of Runeterra, known as Evelyn, is a succubus of sorts, taking the form of an attractive woman in order to seduce and then torture her victims, drawing energy from their pain though this is not the form Evelyn has always taken. During the early history of Runeterra, the demon now known as Evelyn was more of a wisp or a shadow. It wasn't until the Rune Wars, where so many humans would be tormented, Evelyn started to awaken and grow hungry for their pain. But as the Rune Wars started to de-escalate and the suffering of the world began to lessen, Evelyn would become desperate for the abundant energy that she had become so accustomed to. Evelyn had an easy time getting near humans in her shadow form, but in order to touch them, 
and administer physical pain, she would need to fabricate a physical body. Her initial attempts at this physical form were often too gruesome and horrifying. Whenever someone would see Evelyn, they would simply run away in terror. Evelyn learned what men desired, so she became the embodiment of attraction, luring her prey in with her flirtatious nature, only to rip away the mask whenever she got them right where she wanted them. In recent years, Evelyn has been feeding in the great city of Demacia, primarily preying on intoxicated and vulnerable men. It was here where Evelyn would murder Shauna Vane's parents, leading the young child to pursue a life as a monster hunter, seeking revenge against the demon which destroyed her family. After years of training, Vane would return back to Demacia, where she learned that Evelyn had gained a cult following and that her worshippers would bring sacrifices to their chapel in the hills. Since this is currently the last known whereabouts of Evelyn, I'm sure that players will be tasked with bringing down this cult during the events of the Riot MMO. Also known as the River King and Two Coats, the demon who goes by the name Tom Kench is a well-known legend from the rivers of Shirima to the coasts of Bilgewater. So well-known, in fact, that his image is regularly used in advertisements for casinos, bars, and other various layers of depravity. Tom Kench lives in the waterways of Runeterra and seeks to prey on those who gamble or covet the wealth of others. Through greed, gambling addictions, or simply desiring more for themselves, Tom Kench preys on those who are desperate to free themselves from financial burdens. Tom Kench feeds on the desperation, sorrow, and misery that comes from his victim's greed and loss. In a local Bilgewater bar, an old harpooner named Lars tells the story of his encounter with the River King. As a young man, Lars found himself in a great deal of debt with no money to his name. Late one evening, Lars is approached by Tom Kench, who convinces him to stop wasting his time working on someone else's ship and to start his own harpooning business. As Lars explained that he doesn't have the money to afford his own ship, Tom Kench suggests a solution to his financial woes. Gambling. Tom Kench gives Lars a single gold coin, and as Lars continues to drink throughout the night, his memory becomes a blur. The next day, Lars wakes up with his winnings from the previous night on his dresser, but now that he has enough money to buy his own ship, Tom Kench convinces him that one ship won't be enough, that he'll need an entire fleet of ships if he's to run a successful enterprise. Tempted by greed, Lars continues gambling, with Tom Kench always at his side. From backroom card games, rolls of the dice, and other types of gambling and betting, Lars continues through the ups and downs of winning and losing. As if sucked into a time warp, he continues gambling for years, forgetting the original reason why he started in the first place. Even when he makes enough from his winnings to afford an entire fleet of ships, he still doesn't stop. He keeps going, and he starts to lose. This only makes him increase his betting sizes, so that he can win it all back, until eventually, he loses it all. His money, his friends, his house everything. At his lowest point, Lars even sells his own leg to be used as chum. Finding him living on the street, drinking from a puddle, Tom Kench approaches Lars once again and presents him with the same gold coin that he gave to Lars on the first night that they met, attempting to entice him into relapsing into his old gambling ways. Luckily, Lars seems to have learned from his mistakes, and he refuses Tom Kench's offer, but Tom Kench just laughs it off and tells Lars that he'll be back whenever Lars changes his mind. However, Lars can be considered a best-case scenario, as the vast majority of Tom Kench's victims never recover from their encounters with him. In one legend, seeking a better life for himself, a raftsman is approached by Tom Kench, who claims that if the raftsman tells a lie to his brother, he'll show the raftsman a way to a better life. When the raftsman complies, a fork in the river opens up, where it previously didn't exist. The river leads the raftsman to a new village, and the villagers there offer him food, drink, and other festivities. After the raftman's jovial experience, Tom Kench approaches him again and tells him that if he lies to the village leader, he'll take the raftsman to an even better location. Seeing what Tom Kench is capable of, the raftsman doesn't hesitate to lie to the village leader, and again, another new pathway opens in the river. Again, it leads to an even bigger and more extravagant village, and the raftsman eats even more food and indulges in even more festivities. As Tom Kench continuously convinces the raftsman to lie to his new friends, Tom Kench leads the raftsman to a new, bigger, and better party every night, until eventually, the man finds himself at the mouth of the river, where it meets the sea. As he has betrayed everyone he has met during this voyage, the raftsman has no one to help him get back home. He's left here, stranded in open water, forever alone. In another tale, 
Tom Kench once approached a struggling inventor. He offered her a new idea for an invention in exchange for one lock of her hair. As this was a small price to pay, the woman agreed, and ultimately her invention was successful. Over time, Tom Kench would come to her again, saying that he would give her another invention idea if she would give him all of her hair. As she was struggling to come up with a new idea, she complied, shaving her head and successfully creating another new invention. Throughout her career, Tom Kench would offer her more ideas. One would cost just the tip of her finger, another for one of her ears. After a year, the woman had nothing left to give, so she offered Tom Kench her life. He happily accepted, explaining that he was, in fact, saving the woman from herself. One final piece of folklore follows a similar theme. Tom Kench comes across a man who's addicted to gambling, and he offers the man a way out of his debt. Tom Kench brings the man to a new kingdom, where the man meets a woman, who he eventually falls in love with. During their wedding, Tom Kench reveals himself and devours the bride, her family, their most prized possessions, and destroys the village. While Fiddlesticks feeds on fear, and Evelyn feeds on pain, Tom Kench appears to feed on the despair caused by loss. Though many of his victims start with very little, they tend to lose even more than they could imagine whenever they make a deal with the River King. So how might we encounter these champions during the events of the upcoming Riot MMO? Well, clearly Demacia has a demon problem. I can see Evelyn, Fiddlesticks, and probably Nocturne, who I'll talk about in a future video, being either dungeon or world bosses throughout Demacia. As a WoW Classic player, I feel like Demacia will have a very Elwyn Forest vibe that will ultimately lead into a creepy Dustwood-like area. Since demons are basically unkillable, I can see many of these champions recurring throughout the zones and dungeons, getting progressively more difficult over time. The abandoned farming village of Goldweald is where we'll probably encounter fiddlesticks, possibly in several forms throughout the zone. And as Evelyn is currently leading a cult in the hillside of Demacia, it seems pretty obvious that we'll be fighting against these cult members and their demonic deities throughout the zones. We may even help Vane in her pursuit to get revenge against Evelyn for killing her family. As for Tom Kench, he will definitely either be a roaming world boss or a dungeon boss in Bilgewater. However, I can see a possibility where Riot doesn't necessarily include Bilgewater at launch, as it could easily act as a main hub whenever the Shadow Isles expansion releases. But again, with demons, they can come in many forms, and we may see him multiple times throughout the zones of Shirima, Ishtal, and Bilgewater. We might even be able to strike a deal with him ourselves to gain some new power or fortune. Would you be willing to strike a bargain with the River King? Well anyways, those are just a couple of my theories about how we might encounter these champions during the upcoming Riot MMO. What do you think? Since this video's topic was exclusively related to the ancient primordial demons of Runeterra, I did leave out other demons and demonic spirits such as Nocturne and Shaco, since they were created closer to modern times. I'll be covering them, the Rune Wars, and other champions in my upcoming videos. Well that's all for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.